good one. There we go. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome to Liberty Science Center. My name is Rosa. And I'm Barbara. And as Barbara said, we are with Liberty <laughs> Science Center. <laughs> And we have a great program to talk to you about today. Uh, but before we start, just a few um, uh, guidelines to keep everybody on the same page. So we have two classrooms. Um, we're going to give Greenville an opportunity to say hello to Iao in Hawaii. Say hello. They're in Hawaii. <laughs> OK, now Iao, say hello to Greenville in Kentucky. <laughs> okay, excellent. Now that we've gotten to know each other just a little bit by greeting, um, let's show you a little bit about the program. So just a reminder, as I said before, um, all you'll need to do is just keep your mics muted in the meantime. If there is a question, which we love taking questions throughout the entire program, if there is a question, if the teachers can just wave their hand in front of the camera, we'll be able to see you. And we'll give you the time to ask your questions loud and clear, because what you have to say is very important to us. So let's begin. And the program that we're going to talk about is biodiversity. It's in peril, people. It's in peril. OK, biodiversity. So boys and girls, what is it that you think biodiversity means? Let's go with Iao first. Remember, raise your hand. It's a long word. I know that. that one. Right here, Marlo. I think it means, um, I mean, the animals, like, different animals coming together, like, coming as one, I think, because it's all diverse animals into different things. OK. Does anyone want to add to that definition in Kentucky? What is biodiversity? Right here. Oh, can there you go. Biodiversity is endangered species. OK, so now we're going to give you a few hints as to how you maybe we could expand that definition a bit. <coughs> OK, so the definition of biodiversity is an interesting one. We're going to take a look at a few creatures, because these creatures we're going to feature in our presentation. But I want you to think about these animals and what they may have in common. Uh, let's go with Greenville. What do you think these creatures may have in common? And it's related to biodiversity. As I what do you think they have in common? Yeah. Hard. Hard and third. What do Let's you think go back to that picture again. So maybe you you can't quite see what they are. are we they have uh, an animal up on the top, and we have another one similar. It looks a little similar to it over on the left. And then we have a totally different animal over there on the right, on the bottom. So what do you think all of these animals that we show you have in common? They're all endangered. Very, very good. Oh, yes. God, they are all endangered. Right. So the animals that we have featured here at the top is that alligator snapping turtle. We have a box turtle right underneath, and we have cotton top tamarins at the bottom. And these creatures, two of them are listed as threatened in a few states. And the cotton top is actually one that is critically endangered. OK, so now what we're going to do is get back to that definition of biodiversity because it really ex it, uh, encompasses a number of different points. So biodiversity is the variation of life that is within a given ecosystem. So when we think about those words, variation means there could be a lot of different types of individuals. 
And within a given ecosystem, there are very many different types of ecosystems that can cover the entire Earth. So when we think now of biodiversity as a, as a discussion point, we're going to try to learn a little bit about the life forms that are around the Earth and why it is important for us to understand that. Okay, now the first question, well actually the first activity that we would like to do with you is to think about your diversity. How are, how are you diverse as compared to your classmates? Let's start with Greenville. Question, how are y'all different from each other? And we don't have the same thing. <laughs> you tell <clears throat> We don't have the same hair. Excellent. That is one way that you are diverse. Any other way in Greenville? I wear different clothes than everybody else. Okay. okay. Your choice in clothing. Any anyone else? One more. <laughs> You'll have different color eyes. Different color eyes. Let's go to Yao in Hawaii. How are you diverse as compared to your classmates? Different nationalities. Different okay. nationalities. Excellent. Let's get two more. How else are you guys different from each other? Different personalities. Yeah. Personalities. Different personalities. Different personalities. Yeah, different personalities. One more. We like different things. We like, we like different, different things. Ah, uh, you like different things. Perfect. So now you can understand that there's actually the beautiful thing about the Earth is that it has all of these various components, whether it's looking at people and how they're different, because differences can make us really interesting to one another. This is how friendships are formed. Differences can also help bridge gaps of maybe you were uncomfortable in talking to someone, but now, hey, maybe let's talk about this topic because your hair is different from my hair. Let's talk a little bit about that. But in the environment, when we look at biodiversity, we're actually going to be studying different levels. OK, now when you think about different levels of biodiversity, there are three of them. There is a genetic diversity. Uh, genetic diversity means people that have something or an organism that has something totally different from another organism. When we think of, we can think of a snake that has a forked tongue versus humans that don't have a forked tongue. We just have one single part of our tongue. And there are species diversity. When you think of uh, dogs, how many of you have a dog at home? OK, I have a dog, and Rosa has two dogs. And I am bound to tell you that my dog and Rosa's dog have something similar, but my dog has got brown and white, and her dog has got black and white. And then she has a bigger brown dog. So there's a lot of different species diversity. So in species is the last part of the uh, organism's way of, of uh, how should we say, of classifying people. So there are a lot of species. Now the last part of, uh, of diversity is an ecosystem diversity. And when you think of ecosystem, let's give you a bit of a picture. An ecosystem is, is defined as the relationship among all the living resources and habitats of a resident in an area. But an ecosystem also includes not just living organisms, but also the dead part, or what we call the abiotic part of an ecosystem. And that could be rocks, or it could be sand, or it could be the air, or it could be the sky. And the living parts of an ecosystem are the living organisms, like the fish, or the bacteria, or birds, all sorts of different different species and different life forms. Now the reason we're telling you and we're encouraging you to think about diversity 
and biodiversity is because there are a number of different organisms we're going to show you that really are endangered. And remember, one of the questions that you answered correctly was there was an in the three organisms we showed you, they are all threatened or endangered. So where they live is not very, very comfortable, and they may not be living there long. So we're going to show you now something that's called a hot spot. Now, a hotspot is defined as something that contains at least 1,500 different plants. And these plants are found only in these specific areas. And also, a hotspot is defined as having lost at least 70% of its original habitat. Now, the first thing that we're going to show you a little bit about is my favorite little toy here. And this is a cotton top tamarind. Now, we have some tamarinds up in our exhibit. And we're going to show you a little bit about them. And we're going to show you where they live and why they're considered threatened. OK, so let's go and switch the video. Excellent. So take a look at what's going on here. What you see is actually a family of cotton top tamarinds. And right now, inside of the enclosure, they're actually doing a social activity with our animal handler, Heidi. And what's actually happening is that these monkeys are very, very smart. So they do need enrichment activities in order to um, prevent them from being bored. Because as you know, sometimes boredom can get you into trouble. And it's the same case for these cotton top tamarinds. But let's understand a little bit of, while you're watching them, give you a little bit of facts of why they're considered critically endangered. OK, so let's understand a little bit about the tamarinds. There are only 6,000 tamarinds in the wild. And out of those 6,000, only 2,000 are adults. Now, I'd like to go back to the slide to show you exactly where they're located. And if Rosa uses our little pen there, she can point out there's a specific spot in the northwestern part of, of, of uh, Colombia, which is in South America. Now, this is the area exactly where Middle America uh, attaches to the South American continent. These 6,000 cotton top tamarinds that are located there are much reduced from the thousands and thousands of ones that used to live there. So if you have a cotton top tamarind in captivity, which is where they are in our exhibit upstairs, so they, can live, they can live 24 years. But in the wild, they might only live to be 13 years old. They weigh only about a pound, so they're very, very teeny tiny. And they're part of the mammalian structure that's called a new world monkey. And one of the interesting things about these cotton top tamarinds, other than the fact they're very cute, is that they make 38 different types of sounds in their way of communicating, not just with their own families, but with other troops in their area. They live in the low forest, and they live in the middle forest part of the, uh, the northwestern part of Colombia. So the reason that these poor animals are only 6,000 uh, in the wild is because of the problems that many biodiverse hotspots face. They lose a lot of their area because people are cutting down the trees and growing uh, crops. There's a lot of agricultural uh, growth now in these uh, lowland forest areas. And also, one of the things that makes it because they're so cute is that people are collecting them for the pet trade. So they get all of these cute little animals, and they sell them to people who decide that they want to take them. Now, I see that we have a question from Iao. Go ahead. Um, why doesn't one of the monkeys have a tail? <laughs> OK, yes, one monkey uh, does not have a tail. The other four do. And the monkey that doesn't have the tail is the mother. 
and it appears that when she was uh, first in another uh, enclosure that she was under so much stress that she wound up losing her tail. So right. they all should have tails, but except the uh, the mother monkey. It, it's unsure to us the reason because um, there's a, a couple of theories. One is stress. The other is perhaps uh, living in the group. Her mother did not know how to take care of her properly. So these creatures actually have to work socially. It's the whole group that um, works together to raise the young. And there is actually a young, recent uh, born uh, baby Terramin that you just saw right there on the screen on the mother's back. So it, there, there's a lot of theories, but they should all have tails, and she does not. Yeah, there's a uh, gecko also that uh, winds up uh, losing its tail if it's under stress, too. Mm -hmm. Now, any other questions from Greenville, perhaps? Jackson? How many endangered species are there in the world? That's, unfortunately, that list keeps growing. And it's not just endangered, it goes by a few different levels. You have vulnerable, which means people should start becoming very conscious um, of the fact that these creatures are not as great in numbers. There's the next level, which would be threatened. Then there's um, uh, endangered which is uh, threatened is basically that um, we do need to put them on the list and, and make sure that we're doing something about conserving them. Uh, then we go to endangered uh, and critically endangered where their numbers are in the, in the thousands. So um, we need to look after them. So the answer to your question is there are many, unfortunately, on the list because it's not just mammals, it's plants, it's birds, it's um, insects. So there's various categories. And most of the species on, on the earth are all insects. So uh, I think 90% of all species on the earth are made up of insect species. So there's quite a variety of that. The last point that I wanted to make as to why these cotton top tamarins are endangered or critically endangered, as Rosa said, is due to biomedical research. It seems a number of researchers wound up capturing these animals and sending them to uh, universities and research centers uh, because they have a very, very particularly sensitive uh, uh, gut or uh, intestinal area. So they have a tendency of getting colitis. So what they're doing with the medical research is trying to understand using this animal as a model to understand why uh, colitis occurs. Fortunately, since 1976, no longer are they allowed to be taken for medical research. And I just want to point out that what you were seeing there was the uh, father figure of that whole brood. Uh, let's take a question from Yao. Go ahead, Russell. Um, how old is that newborn? It's only a few that, months. It's huh? a, yeah, that's correct. It's only a few months old. Can we have it? <laughs> um, only if uh, you are part of the conservation effort and are recognized by the Association of Zoological um, uh, Studies so that you can actually be part of the conservation effort in growing their numbers. See, they're very cute. That's why everyone wants one. That's not a good thing. All right, so we see that they are doing exactly what they should be doing. They're socializing, they're grooming, they're working together, and that they are actually doing a great job for this broadcast. We did not pay them to do this. They do this <laughs> on their own. Okay, so uh, we got a question from Laura in Toronto who wants to know if the trees are being cut down uh, for urban sprawl. And yes, that is actually one of the reasons um, that, the, uh, that deforestation is happening, is to make room for uh, human spaces. 
And one of the interesting things is, is that there are indigenous people that live very close to this forest in uh, northwestern Colombia. So what they're trying to do is be able to have some existence. And they are growing food and trying to be able to feed themselves and feed their families. What they have done now is by uh, developing industries that do not involve capturing the tamarinds or do not involve cutting down the forests and the trees. Uh, that's what they're trying to be encouraged to do. And this way that they can exist and have money and also leave the forest and the animals alone. Does Greenville have a question? <laughs> Make sure she can see. You. There you go. How big are they? Uh, they're only about one pound, and so they're very small. Mm. About the size of a uh, liter uh, soda bottle. That's about as big as they are. Although their tail is twice as long as they are. Yeah. They have a long tail. Any other questions from Greenville? How many tamarinds are in your exhibit? Excellent question. We have one male, one mom. Or, um, as, uh, let me start over. We have one male, and I believe it's four females at this time, which is one mom, two twin sisters, and the new infant girl. So normally they actually have twins. Uh, Eyal, your Other. questions. Well, what kind of animals do you guys have? What other kind of animals? What, what other kinds of animals? Well, great question. We're actually going to go ahead and show you uh, the next animal that we're going to talk about, which is uh, the alligator snapping turtle. So. We have quite a collection, about 110 different animals at Liberty Science Center right now. And the one that uh, is considered uh, threatened in certain states in the United States is the alligator snapping turtle. And this is actually something that is in your neck of the woods, uh, Greenville, um, because they are uh, predominantly in the southern states. Um, of the United States. And what I do want to show you is uh, images that we have before we go to the live tank. So with the images that you see here, the alligator snapping turtle, actually I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you Greenville because this is kind of uh, the animal that you have in your neck of the woods. Can you give us some information about what you know of the alligator snapping turtle? Um, what do you know about it? Oh, yeah, go ahead. They can bite you if you get too close to them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely they can. Anyone else? That they can that if they bite you they don't let you go until sundown. <laughs> 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 that that one that one's a, a, a folklore that we're gonna have to go and investigate. Yeah, Anyone I, else? They are really big and really heavy. Okay, okay. One more person. They blend in with their environment. Excellent. And by the way, that student who said blend in with the environment, what's the scientific word that we use to describe that action. What are they? Uh -huh. Camouflage. Excellent. Very good. Good job. Excellent. And I knew that you knew this, Eyal. I know that you know this as well. Oh, look at that. Uh, Eyal is applauding Greenville students. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Eyal, do you know any information about the alligator snapping turtle? What? No. Yeah. What? What? No. What? What? No. What? What? All right. So let's go and and show this in real time. 
So right now we are exploring the exhibit of the alligator snapping turtle, and this is on the third floor as well as the tamarins were, on the third floor of Liberty Science Center in an exhibition hall called Eaten Be Eaten. And you're taking a look at the basically the identifying marks that makes an alligator snapping turtle or gives the alligator snapping turtle its name. You have these three large ridges on its back that kind of looks like an alligator in the water. So that's where it gets its name from. And it's called snapping because of the quick action that in the way that the mouth actually closes. It doesn't have any teeth, but it does have a beak like mouth that it can, um, with some serrations in the beak, um, that it can grab and pull basically the flesh off of fish or anything that it scavenges. It does um, both hunt in the day and at night, so it's a diurnal um, animal. And um, with the fact that it actually has a really cool technique to camouflage. One of it is it lies very, very still. And you can see that our alligator snapping turtle had a very gray-green pattern. And its gray-green pattern, along with the murky uh, substrate of the river that it might be in, because it's a freshwater turtle, it'll actually lay there during the daytime and wiggle its tongue because at the end of its tongue is this um, worm-like appendage. And it's that worm-like appendage that it wiggles back and forth, doesn't even have to, it doesn't move at all. It leaves its mouth gaping open. And it waits till the fish starts biting it while, I mean, the fish is basically in its mouth and it snaps shut. But it does have the ability, I mean, this action happens very quickly, and if you get your fingers caught in its mouth, it can break your fingers. It might even sever a finger. So be careful. Um, they are considered threatened um, because of the areas that they reside in, these freshwater areas, whether it be a lake or a river. Um, are being overrun and um, are being uh, used by humans, whether it's for cattle or some kind of um, farm techniques or whether it's um, clearing to put housing, these animals are now having their homes being threatened and they do spend quite a long time in the water. So here we are again. Um, this particular animal that we have is a male. And with the male, we can tell the difference because it has a larger, thicker tail. Um, nails on the back of its legs are a little shorter. It does have webbing between its toes. Maybe we can take a, oh, I see why. He's actually scooched behind <laughs> um, one of the panels so we can't see his beautiful face. But um, the images that I had before kind of showcase the face for us. It actually likes to wedge itself between a log. So that item there is a log. Let's go to Yao for some questions. How do, they How do you feed it? the turtle? Very carefully. <laughs> no, that, that was a bad joke. OK, so the turtle's actually fed with, um, oh, there we go, a nice overhead shot. Uh, the turtle's actually fed by giving it um, pieces of fish, uh, mollusks or, or shellfish and it'll actually go after those pieces that fall into the water. So we can, it, it, like I said before, it's a scavenger, it's a very good scavenger, but it can be an active, um, it can be one of those sit and wait eaters. So we don't usually give it live fish. It's mostly stuff that's already dead. Um, we have a question, let's see, if the Termins did go extinct, what effect would they have on their egos? Oh, sorry. How can a snapping turtle bite you if it doesn't have teeth? Well, same kind of think about a parrot. How many times have you, maybe not you, but maybe you've heard of somebody who gets nipped on the finger by a parrot? It 
uses its beak to kind of open and close. And so it's not so much mastication or that chewing that happens, it's more of a close and pull. So you might get uh, bitten in the sense of a closer animal that has a beak, a parrot would, uh, than actually being chewed by the turtle. Um, okay, if the tamarins did go extinct, what? Oh. No, no. <laughs> Anthony would like to know how an alligator snapping turtle is different from other turtles. Great question, Anthony. And um, the answer to that is the other turtles wouldn't have those three prominent ridges on its back. Um, they're they're diff a different species from other turtles. They do spend quite a bit of time in the water. So based on the skin around their eyes, the coloring, and the way that their scoots or how their shells are formed, that what, that's what makes them different from other turtles. OK, if the tamarins did go extinct, what would be the effect on their ecosystem? That's a very good question. Uh, the important thing about the tamarins is that they are one, one of their uh, major uh, food sources are uh, fruits. So they eat a lot of fruits. And in the middle of fruits are usually seeds. So the tamarind, by eating the fruits and releasing the seeds in its, uh, in its uh, deposits, allows for uh, generations of new types of plants and trees. A lot of the monkeys do that sort of thing. But depending on what the tamarinds actually eat, they wind up uh, fostering different types of trees and plants in the forest. And that makes their ecosystem uh, very good and allows for the more diverse types of trees and plants in the area. All right. Now let's go to Iao, who's had a question for a while. Go ahead, Iao. Do you guys have eels? Do we have eels? That's a great question. We do not currently have eels, but uh, we do have an aquatic area on the fourth floor that features all the animals that are in the Hudson River or in, um, in the Hudson River uh, itself and the estuary. So at one point we did, but currently we do not. Greenville, do you have some questions? Yep. Okay. Does the alligator snapping turtle warn people whenever they're near? The answer to that is no. And because they um, are one of those uh, hunters that are very still, they like to wait for the prey to come to them. So they're not going to give any sort of warning um, that they are around. So you need to be careful. Yes, they camouflage very, very well, just as as rocks or uh, pieces of wood that's in the water. Eow. Can uh, you hold up the turtle? Your hands. You oh, the turtle? the turtle that I have happens to be an eastern box turtle. I'm going to go over to the remote camera oh, oh, just oh. to get uh, give you a closer look at this turtle. This is another turtle that's considered threatened. And we're going to get a closer look. And you can actually see the difference between this turtle and the turtle that, um, the turtle that uh, we were showing in the tank, the alligator snapping turtle. You can see that it doesn't have those three prominent ridges. It does have the shell, the uh, hinge uh, joint right under here. This is a bi fold, which means that it can actually fold clothes right over here in the middle and kind of tuck its entire body in its shell. And it's able to do that because turtles have a really amazing, uh, have evolved amazing in that their rib cage, their bone structure, and even their skin, their dermis, is very hard and has fused together. So um, these would be the ribs or the spine, excuse me, it has a portion of its pelvis, otherwise the rest of it is um, one solid material, and everything else is floating organs. So it can actually just tuck itself in 
tuck itself in, and I'm not going to force him to tuck himself in at this point. He doesn't want to. <laughs> um, I know it's a male because as I'm touching him underneath his, um, uh, under the plastron here, what I can feel is that it's uh, convex. So if it was female, it would actually be more of a rounded bottom. But this little guy is definitely a he. So let's take some questions from uh, Greenville. Go right ahead. I can ask it now. Oh. I don't think they're going to be able to show you the. What is the main diet of the monkey? Great question. Okay, the, the main diet for the monkeys are fruits, and they also wind up eating sap. And uh, they also eat insects. They, they are pretty uh, popular with the insect crowd. So remember, there's loads and loads of insects. So tree sap, uh, fruits, nuts, uh, insects. Sometimes they will eat uh, reptile and uh, amphibians. So they have quite a variety of uh, different foods uh, that they could eat. And remember, it's important that they eat those seeds and they deposit them on the uh, floor of the forest. Do you yeah, go ahead. Do you have endangered species from Hawaii? Do we have endangered species from Hawaii? Not currently. No, we do not have. But I do know that Hawaii does have a finch. Um, I forget the name, the specific name of the finch that you have. We do have that particular finch here, but it's not considered at all endangered. In fact, I think it's more an invasive. Um, Nene goose and we have monk seals. How do we have monk seals? Oh no, no, we don't have those. We'll have, to, we'll have to see if there's a, something that we can do. It's hard getting uh, endangered and invasive right. spe or endangered species because you know people want to leave in their area where they're supposed to be living so that they can protect them there because uh, species all develop in certain ecosystems. And when you take them out of their common ecosystem, Sometimes they don't particularly like living anyplace else. We should say that the reason that we have the tamarind is because we're part of a breeding program to see if we can get their numbers increased. So it's really on a conservation effort. Uh, Greenville. Emma. Amy. Oh. Are there any endangered turtles? Endangered turtles. Endangered turtles. I'm sure they actually they are. Um, I want to say that uh, I don't want to give you misinformation. Um, I can definitely email the answer uh, and the link to where you can find endangered turtles because there there definitely are endangered turtles. Well, we but know, I don't there's know yeah. one in the Galapagos. Oh yes, Lonesome George, and there's a number of species of turtles in the Galapagos Island that are definitely endangered. Mm -hmm. I can definitely send you that link. So our time is winding down. And um, we'll see if we can uh, wrap this session up by asking you a critical question that we like to ask the groups that we talk to is, what is one thing that you, you know, would walk away and maybe tell somebody else that you learned today? Let's go to Eyal first. So, Ia, what did you learn that you didn't know before? That those alligator snapping turtles are endangered. Yeah, they're they're threatened. Absolutely. And uh, Greenville, what did you learn? <laughs> That the um, sna yeah, the snapping turtle, the alligator snapping turtle, it has a certain type of design on its back so you can tell. Absolutely. Excellent, excellent. Well, everybody, 
we definitely had a great time uh, talking to you and showing you the animals that we have at Liberty Science Center. The best thing that you can do is learn and explore your surroundings to find out about the creatures that are on, um, on an endangered, threatened, or critically endangered list. And just be aware of the biodiversity in your neighborhood. All right? So we hope you have a great rest of your day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.